Hello, snake plants and calatheas. You know who you are. If you hear some external noise that's like the 10 birds having a swingers party in the forsythia bush outside my bedroom. Could you curb the copious amounts of cantankerous copulation for like a couple minutes? Thank you. Can you hear it? This is what I wake up to. It's a baby scallop. Today I'm going to tell you about five plants that did fabulously for me this winter and five that didn't do so well. Because I view grow lights and humidifiers as cheating, I have not altered the environment of any of these plants besides choosing the best place I could find in my house based on their needs. Basically, the only thing I've done for these plants is water them. I haven't fertilized them because I usually don't fertilize in the winter or any other seasons because I forget to. They're fine. How you doing? If you've been following me for a hot minute, you may know I have some plants under grow lights. I have a video on it. These are not those plants. All natural, organic, non-GMO, free range, whatever. And this is a tall order for a plant to thrive in since we have virtually no sunlight in the winter and mummifyingly dry air. So if some extraterrestrial life form finds a desiccated Phalaenopsis under a pile of rubble 3,000 years after we wipe ourselves from the planet due to our own ignorance, it was me. I'm not buying a humidifier. End of discussion. I made this list in part to help people figure out which plants to buy and which plants to avoid if they live in a frigid hellscape for five months of the year like me. So if you live in a latitudinally challenged part of the earth like moi, this list is for you. And if not, I hope it's entertaining otherwise. Maybe your boyfriend will realize his childhood dreams to be a marine biologist and you'll have to move to Antarctica to study penguins. Do you ever watch those tragic National Geographic shows that are, without fail, narrated by a British male voice? The female emperor penguin has rejected her egg. Now, laying on the ice, in temperatures of negative 20 centigrade, it will be frozen solid within minutes. Just give it to me, I'll sit on it, okay? This event has caught the attention of a scavenger. G get out, get out. And the embryonic penguin was subsequently consumed by a sooty albatross. I can't deal with those shows. I'm like emotionally exhausted for the next week. Can someone tell me when this became a bird video? Let's start on a positive note to dampen the horror that is about to ensue. And we'll start with the plants that did really well this winter. Here is my very large Hoya polyneura. I had to kind of like move over to get it in the frame. It's cute. I started it from a cutting like, like this last week. If you've been following me for a while, you may know I got this large, possibly illegal Hoya polyneura from Europe. Can I get a Hoya? I got this in the summer and it didn't really do anything for me for a couple months. I think it was still reeling from its transatlantic journey. <laughs> After that, it started growing for me into fall and then into winter, and it kind of stopped growing midwinter. I discovered the reason it was not growing was not because of the light or the temperature, but because it was pot bound. I ended up doing the not so recommended thing of repotting my plant midwinter, but it's okay because I'm an expert, just like the people on Instagram soliciting paid plant advice without certifications or degrees, but it's okay because only God can judge us. There's a higher power that will judge you for your indecency. There are a lot of plant tubers that'll give it away for free. Not that. Like the virgin. I should show you this now. It's really not much of a close up because it's gigantic, but I can look at that. Look at the tiny little stem. If you go back to my video unboxing this, this is a bit larger, but I also have taken a suspiciously large amount of cuttings from this. Like, a lot. I have this in a southern window, because why not? It's very expensive. 
I have this in one of the warmer parts of my house. It usually doesn't go below 60 and it gets up to about 72 degrees. It's pretty standard for a household in sub-freezing temperature, I think. I have not gotten this to flower. I don't know what it needs to flower. I haven't fertilized them because I forget to. Maybe I need to let it be pot bound for it to flower, but I'd rather have growth than flowers. So we're just gonna keep it growing and repot it as it gets larger. I also love this because I get to do a lot of giveaways with this. There is not a giveaway at the end of this video, unfortunately, but keep your eye out for them. I don't advertise the giveaways anywhere besides the end of my videos. Um, other than that, I usually have people put crazy comments in order to enter the giveaway. So. Look for those if you're interested. I don't think this is the most interesting Hoya, but I bought it anyways because everyone else was buying it and that kind of sums up the spending habits in this community. This is my second fastest growing Hoya behind Hoya Linearis, which I will be talking about later in this list. I mentioned I got this on eBay and you may want to know the seller. However, they've only been selling textbooks in aeronautics and other extraneous subjects recently. I don't really want to dox them if they don't have any plants in stock. And all of a sudden, all of my followers are sliding into their DMs asking for Hoya Polyneras they may or may not have in stock for the future. Listen, you can save a search on eBay for a specific item which is how I found this, in the buy it now category because they were not in auction, and you will get alerts when new items appear. So if they go on sale again, they will appear. Otherwise, neither myself nor the seller can help you. I'm sorry. There's a little bit more water before we introduce our next plant. Our next is the incomparable watermelon peperomia. One of the few peperomias I actually enjoy, besides String of Turtles, and my huge, wily, crazy peperomia macrostachia that I featured in my last video. I actually have it in this window, and it's trying to strangle my other plants. I, don't, I didn't even know this existed, but now that I do, I need it. I don't think you can see it. The rest of the peperomias can kind of like go over there. I'm also sure Harry Styles would enjoy this. Objectively, this Peperomia frost is beautiful. It's well-grown, it's lush, it's verdant, it's everything you could want in a plant. It just doesn't do it for me. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Maybe it's the size of the leaves. I, just, I like large leaves. Let me give you a little close-up. Did I mention I'm part Chihuahua? You didn't know? My dad's side, actually. I found out with this peperomia because I haven't had a lot of other peperomias flower. If you rub the flower stalk like this, it smells like mushrooms. And if you rub the flower stalk like this in a garden center, you get called a creep. I got it as a leaf with some roots on it and I let it root more, I think in water or sphagnum. Anyways, I put it in some soil after that and it sat for a while it didn't do much, but once the first leaves came out, it just exploded and winter didn't phase it. I found some trending tropicals in my local Walmart before the Costa Karens got to them, and they looked they looked okay. Um, they looked like they needed to be a little bit rehabbed. I don't think they travel well, but I would go for it if you see one and it looks in fairly good condition. I did see some at Lowe's. I don't think I have any footage, but the leaves are massive. They looked a lot better. So if you see one of those, definitely go for it. It's worth it. If you don't have one of these, I think everyone should own one of these. They're amazing. I am required by law to show you this, and I think it's fair law. Some of them are questionable. This one is fine. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. And here's the back of it. I don't really rotate my plants because I don't spend my life rotating plants, but uh, it looks like that. I just got a stupid expensive camera I tried to film this on and I need a different lens, but I'm going to see if it's any good at showing you how beautiful this is up close. Every time. 
I don't have a lot to say about her, but she is dependable, and that is the foundation of a lifelong relationship. <laughs> there is no ephemerality to her. If you didn't know, I've got very old, creaky, drafty windows, and this was set back a couple feet from it, so it's still got a little bit of the draft. The temperature in that room would probably range from 55 degrees to 65 degrees. It does not touch 70 in the winter. I have a philodendron Rio, and it actually grew more slowly, and it was in a warmer room under higher light. It is the same species as this philodendron heteraceum, so I'm not really sure why, but all the more reason you should own this and not a philodendron Rio. I'm just petting a $60 leaf, apparently. I got a few cuttings of this last summer, actually, and they really didn't fully establish until fall. So most of this is winter growth. So if you're wondering if you're like, oh, it, you know, it survived. I mean, it didn't do anything. No, it grew like a foot or more <laughs> in frigid weather. I've seen this at Lowe's. Um, they weren't very big. They're in hanging baskets, but the vines didn't go beyond the edge of the hanging basket. But snoop around, you might find one. Also, they're not very expensive otherwise, so you can order them online, which doesn't mean you shouldn't own it because you should own it. It's a really nice plant. Just because it's not expensive doesn't mean it's not equally as beautiful as other cultivars of philodendron heteraceum. I am required to also show you this. I mean, it's the law. Like, what, what are you going to do? I mean, <laughs> as much as I'd love to be in handcuffs. I love all of the different patternation on here. So we've got the coveted half moon leaf. We've got almost a full moon leaf and a new moon leaf. Got the whole solar system in here. That is not correct. The whole lunar cycle in one plant. That is correct. Find one of these. Calathea mosaica. Calathea. Mama mia. She is back. Now you can see some crispy bits on this. This is mostly the damage that incurred from shipping. That's showing through now. Um, it's on the older leaves exclusively, meaning the leaves that did not emerge in my presence. I found this as a trending tropicals in a grocery store last year and I hopped on it because I figured someone else was gonna take it or take all of them probably. It was pretty big, not as big as it was now, but it was overflowing well i mean this isn't something that really overflows but it was overhanging its pot by a large margin it was also planted in very absorbent 100 percent cocoa coir which is fine for miami but not here i usually don't do this but i ended up washing all of the soil off of the roots this gave me a big flush of foliage after I repotted it. Sometime in January, it ended up sucking up all of the water in its pot very quickly. So I usually use that as a metric for when things need to be repotted. Anyways, unfortunately, I had to repot it. So again, I did the bad thing and I repotted midwinter and I got to see those expensive fingerling potatoes that I can't afford. Fast forward to now, we've got two dozen, I feel like there's two dozen growth shoots emerging from the base of the plant. I can't wait to show you this. I'll do like a spring tour in May or something, but I'm sure this will be fully leafed out at that point. They are a little bit difficult to see, but they look like this and they're just kind of dispersed everywhere throughout the plant. Here is a more mature one. Let's see if I can find a larger one, of course. Nope, not that. This. Hi, bitch. There it is. I know calatheas get a bad rap, but like I said, no humidifier. And it's pretty happy. I do water this with reverse osmosis water, not because I got it specifically for the calathea. I did do a lot of orchids previously, so I got it for those. Also, if you rub this a lot, it smells like banana peel. Could you not? I just started noticing that because I was touching it. <laughs> Mmm, bananas. Hoya linearis. What can I say about this? I take this with a grain of salt. I would say if there is any low light Hoya, this would be it. I will say it does tolerate lower light and still puts out growth compared to most Hoyas. Like my watermelon peperomia, this did not slow down whatsoever in the dead of winter. This was in Western Window and technically 
it's getting direct sun. But unless you live here in the winter, you don't know how cloudy it is. Every window in the dead of winter is essentially a northern window. We will get like one or two days of the week that it's sunny for like an hour. I got this 12 inches long. I will insert a photo if I can find it. It is now four feet long with multiple strands and probably like seven or eight new growths. Flowers are lovely, very easy to flower in my experience. They are white, they hang down, and they are fragrant, but only at night. And in my opinion, they smell like stargazer lilies. I know that this is not exactly the Lodendron Brazil cheap, but get, get a little piece and I think I paid like $20, worth it. 100% worth it. And if these continue growing like they grow, they'll probably be the same price as Golden Pothos at some point or close to it. The flowers also last pretty long. They last a couple weeks. I will show you the buds though because I think they're still really pretty. Look how this just drapes. Isn't that whimsical? I think I've had two other umbels of flowers open for me. So I think this is the third and the fourth and I don't know if it's going to continue throughout the summer or what. I thought they were like a fall or winter blooming Hoya, but I do have a little tiny baby. If you can see it right there. Let's also show this new growth. They just pop out of nowhere and grow. It's ridiculous. Also, be forewarned. If you go to smell these, the leaves are very pointy. They're kind of lance shaped, if you'd call it that. And they can go up into your nose. Now, I probably shouldn't have to say this because let's be real, I'm the only one that's enough of an idiot to do this. So um, I, I don't know. I just thought I'd put it out there if you thought that was interesting. I'll meet you on Bizarre ER when I get one of these leaves stuck into my sinuses. I would say this is probably the least Hoya-y Hoya. It's very limp. Um, usually most Hoyas tend to be very stiff and the leaves are not waxy. They're fuzzy and most of them vine. They don't usually hang like this or they trail, but they don't hang. It's almost like a string of hearts, but not hearts. It's like a string of toothpicks, a string of hairy toothpicks. I spent like five minutes hyping up this plant and uh, I just ruined it. So there goes that. I should name plants. Like what plants could I name? I want to name all the super tunia varieties Proven Winners comes out with every year. You know what? I'm going to do it. Uh, just like putting it out there, Proven Winners, just give me a little bit of credit on the tag. Just like my Instagram handle, at phytosexual. So introducing for the 2021 growing season Supertunia collection, we have Supertunia Barney. This lovely lemon number right here is Supertunia Yellow Snow. Next up is Supertunia. I'm so pale. <laughs> Supertunia. On Wednesdays we wear pink. Supertunia Bubblegum Stuck in My Toddler's Hair. Supertunia, just the tips. We can't go on without Supertunia Virgin's Blood for that cousin you hate. Supertunia Hideous Blouse. Supertunia, could I interest you in some Young Living Lavender Essential Oils? Also, would you like to be a sales rep? Supertunia, it's my eighth marriage and I'm a convicted felon but I'm still choosing to wear white for my wedding reception at Chili's. Hi guys, we're back and guess whose bird problem is solved? <laughs> these are not actually earrings, these are reflectors and uh, you put these on shrubs or whatever to stop your birds from having an orgy in your forsythia or whatever other shrub you have. I feel like I look like Beyonce in this respect in this respect only. She tends to wear these really large, impossibly heavy looking earrings. Moral of the story, if you don't like birds, make your shrubs look like Beyonce. Someone's weave is in the rhododendron. Moving on with our first winter forsaken plant, Alocasia poly. 
I am so glad I did not buy an expensive alocasia last summer, like an alocasia capria or black velvet or dragon scale or rhinoceros skin or something named after the skin of some other animal. I don't think elephant ear type plants like colocasias, xanthosomas, and other alocasias do very well in the winter indoors in general. From my experience, the few that I've had make really bad house plants. And they all do absolutely gorgeous outside. So gorgeous and so beautiful that they could very much so trick you into thinking they'll be that beautiful in the dead of winter, but they will not. Lower light levels with elephant ears that like higher light levels are usually a problem, and then spider mites are also a problem pretty much for all of them, or with all of them that I have owned. I've had Colocasia Thai Giant, which I no longer have because I gave them away because I got tired of dragging it in and out and it getting spider mites and like looking nearly dead by spring. I've had, or I currently have, Xanthosoma Lime Zinger, which isn't doing any better than this right now. It's actually looking a little bit worse. Maybe other people have had different experiences, but these are my experiences. If you want to extrapolate on yours and say otherwise, you can put that in the comments down below. I would love to read it, and I'm sure other people would like to know. I've treated this with Dr. Bronner's cast oil soap mixed with neem oil in water in a spray bottle. And it takes care of it for a couple weeks, but then they come back and I don't really feel like having to spray this every two weeks until the spring. I've also sprayed this with Fluoramite, which is a miticide or a mite targeted pesticide. So far they haven't come back. I did it a couple weeks ago. It's supposed to be a long-term solution that you only have to apply every few months as opposed to every couple weeks or every other week. So if you're an alocasia collector, that might be for you. Again, I don't really like having to spray my plants with pesticide. I don't know. So far, so good. But again, I don't really want to have to keep treating this. I only really like to treat insects when it's just kind of like a one-off type thing. And, you know, I get an infestation with a few plants and I kind of have to move those away. But if I get a plant that continually gets infested with the same thing, I don't want to deal with it. If you've ever had citrus, scale. Scale, 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 scale which is why I stopped growing citrus indoors. No matter what type of citrus, lemons, oranges, kumquats, calamondins, I don't know, whatever crazy hybrids of citrus they come up with, they always get scale. Here is this. It's just shiny and gross and sappy. It's not like shiny in the good sense. It's shiny in the like, ew, I don't want to touch it sense. And this leaf is about to die. You see that? Look at all the areas where the chlorophyll was chewed out of the leaf because that's what they do like little jerks the back is still really gorgeous though look at the baby oh, oh so cute even though this isn't part of the list it's in my thumbnail i'm going to show you my xanthosoma which looks no better than this look how well this is doing guys it's just great don't you love it i love it it's a great accent piece it's very green zen Amazing. I don't really know what to say about this. I think it speaks for itself. The thing is, this is going to be absolutely gorgeous and huge and luscious and nice by the end of the summer. And it's going to revert back to this by the spring. I think I'm just gonna keep the dead leaves on here to be dramatic. Here is my Hoya Cotata. I'm surprised it's not evaporating in front of me. I got this last June. I rooted it until September. It grew a couple small leaves for me. It was then transferred into Miracle Grow and Perlite. And before you come at me, both my Hoya Linearis that I previously showed you and my Hoya Polyneura are in Miracle Grow potting soil and doing just fine. Take that with a grain of salt because I know the contents in the soil can vary based on your location, which isn't very helpful for me to suggest it to you. This grew a leaf for me in November or December, which is how I know I don't have a life because I know when a specific leaf grew on one of the 100 plants I have has. Got this with two leaves, this leaf and this leaf, which are the leaves that are damaged. Gave me these leaves while it was in sphagnum moss. I don't know what this leaf is. I guess it decided to grow a leaf and I was like, eh, I don't really want to grow a leaf. I then got this gigantic monster leaf, which is probably why I remember it. 
This started to get dehydrated towards the end of the winter, so I thought it was a humidity problem. I put a dome over the top of it. It wasn't really doing anything, so I decided to then take it out of its pot, out of the soil, and it had barely any live roots. I don't know if it was a cold thing and a low light thing or a soil thing because it grew for me in the soil, but then it decided to start dying on me in the soil, so I'm not exactly sure what happened. I have this in a greenhouse in sphagnum moss right now, and as you saw, the leaf is plump and very shiny and turgid. I think I'm just going to continue growing this in sphagnum moss. I guess we'll see how this fares in sphagnum moss next winter. I don't intend in keeping it in a greenhouse because it's going to get larger, I hope, and I don't really have any terrariums. They're just like makeshift cups and whatnot. I actually am going to be getting a terrarium soon to house my extensive obliqua collection in, so maybe this can join it. Do you think this is rare enough though? Okay, let's figure this out. Wait, hold on. Ooh. Ooh wow. Okay, that's on my wish list. Anyways, um, Hoya Codata and the sold button 25 dollars free shipping <gasps> oh my god 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 this was in a really good location it was in a really warm room it probably didn't get below 68 degrees and it got up to i would say about 73 degrees and it was in a southern window these are native to thailand and malaysia so they like really warm temperatures which again, I think was part of the problem. I did find a care guide online for this and it did help me bring this back to life somewhat. So I'll read you a few of the helpful lines I found in it. Although it can withstand full sun for a short time, leaves would burn. Mostly morning or evening light is fine, but do avoid hot midday sun. And further along, it said this, the most suitable environment in the house for them would be south facing windows and north facing windows. Avoid hot midday sun. South facing windows? I'm sorry, you're telling me avoid hot midday sun, but you're also telling me to put it in a south window? And you're telling me to put it in a south window, but also put it in a north window, like the two are analogous in the amount of light that comes through the windows. But not anywhere in the middle, not east or west, just south or north. It either has to be really dim or really bright. This was not a Reddit post. This was on a website for plant care. My philodendron golden goddess. Or my philodendron golden... I don't know, it's not a goddess anymore. <laughs> That's all I know. Or my philodendron Thai sunrise if you're trying to confuse eBay buyers for your monetary gains. This was in the coldest area of my house in the most brutal room next to my philodendron Brazil. And as you can see, we got vastly different results. When it got colder late fall, it started to get brown splotches on its leaves. Now, all of those have since dropped, but I saw them and I was like, eh, this can't get any worse. It absolutely got worse, like everything I brush under the rug. If you have one of these, I would say make sure it stays above 60 degrees, maybe 65 if you want to be safe. There were five or six of these in this pot last year. There are now two of these and one rooted wet stick. I think that's what you would call it. I hate that name. It sounds kind of gross. It's coming back though. Even the wet stick, I think. I don't really know if I want it, but whatever. If this was a healthier specimen, I think this would be nice in one of those big blue glazed ceramic planters with some pink or salmon New Guinean patients, with some papyrus for height in front of my mansion in Coral Gables. Here is my Ficus triangularis variegata, and you may have seen this in my second to last video because someone told me I needed some plants in my background. Okay, fine. You know, you're right. It looks better now. And someone even commented how great it looked. And yes, it looks great from the front. But just like the glossy facade of everything on social media, the appearance is not often analogous to the truth. 
proceeds to take my wig off. Okay, that is real. I promise, you can come tug on it if you want. I'm going to try to not make a huge mess here, but there are a lot of leaves that this has dropped. Proceeds to make a mess. There are a lot of leaves. Uh, this is very bald. Yes, some leaf drop in the winter is normal, but this has lost about half of its leaves. If you can see, it's just the tips. Brought to you by Supertunia, just the tips of the branches that now have leaves, and not even all of them. Some of them don't even have any leaves at the growth points, and some of the growth points have died. This is not in the corner of a dark room. This is an eastern exposure sunlight, and temperatures are, you know, pretty average between 60 and I would say 72 degrees. These come from South Africa, and if you know anything about the vegetation or landscape of South Africa, it's not very forested. It's, you know, there is open forest. Most of it is scrubland or desert. It probably gets a lot of sunlight, and because it's South Africa, it's not exactly tropical. I'm sure it does get very hot at times, just like places in Arizona and California get hot at times, but it does probably cool down at night and during the winter. The variegation in this does not help the situation because part of the leaf is not capturing sunlight and the part of the leaf that is capturing the sunlight has to support the parasitic part of the leaf that is not. I found pictures of an unvariegated form of this on Top Tropical's website, which is a nursery in South Florida. It was outside, it was doing fine. I also found pictures of a variegated form in Singapore. They were outside, they were doing great. A lot of other figs start their lives in dense tropical forests or grow as understory trees, which explains why these do not do as well in low light as they do. I would say if you want Ficus triangularis in lower light situations, go ahead and try just the solid green-leaved form. I have found a picture of one of them in a house and it is not in front of a window and it looks like it's doing fine. It is being staked up because it is kind of lanky due to its lower light situation, but it's still green, it's still foliated. I think it still looks fine. For whatever reason, it's also giving me these useless figs that I don't want. I would say the plant has been spiting me with these since December. All they do is grow to the sides of a caper, fall off, and roll into one of the floor vents. It's in my i- oh. It's in my- it was in my iPad case and then it rolled out. But yeah, that's about what they do. With like a few leaves and not these useless, useless figs. figs. It's like this Ficus triangularis variegata is Rick from Pawn Stars. I'm like, hi, could I get a few leaves if I water you and move you into the sun? And it's like, no, I'm sorry, this is the best I can do. Ready, I'm gonna fling it at you. Nope, oh, it went over you. Don't know where that went, don't care. Moral of the story is plants in the same genus do not have the same care requirements, even though they are in the same genus. Man, I don't know what this one. This is Ariostema lauderbachii, formerly known as Hoya lauderbachii, but taxonomists have nothing better to do, so they changed the genus. It has something to do with very vague descriptors that do not apply to all the plants in the genus. It's like some of the species in the genus Ariostema have hair on their leaves, but some of them don't. But also some of the species in the genus Hoya have hair on their leaves. However, if it's a Hoya, the hairs are angled 70 to 80 degrees from the surface of the leaf. And in Ariostema, the hairs are angled 80 to 90 degrees away from the surface of the leaf. Give or take 10 degrees for either of the genre. I'm sure that'll be very helpful to people in the field that are trying to identify plants with a dichotomous key. This is a very interesting plant because it produces the largest flower of any Hoya when it was included in the genus Hoya. It has large flowers, okay. This is a very large growing plant and I was warned it would never flower for me unless I lived somewhere I could put it outside like South Florida or Hawaii or somewhere else outside of the United States in the tropics. And that's fine. I really like the foliage when it looked better. It's, it's very fuzzy and shiny at the same time, which is perplexing because usually those two don't coexist. Sometimes I just kind of like to like, I 
I love fuzzy things. Did I tell you I had a strong affinity for accidentally squeezing hamsters to death when I was little? My parents soon realized I needed a stress ball and a psychologist more than I needed a small animal. The leaves are also kind of like pleated, which is cool. Unfortunately, they're not two ply. This lost a few leaves at the top of the stem it was trying to grow. The rest of the leaves, oddly enough, look like they were attacked by spider mites, but there are no spider mites. I've never seen any spider mites, no webs, nothing. I am thinking this year I might change the soil, which is miracle Grow, which I plant almost everything in and everything pretty much does great. The only ones that seem to have an issue with it so far are Hoya caudata and Hoya not so Hoya area stem a lot of back yai. I'll give you a close up of what's going on here. If you want to see, you probably don't want to see. We also have these little brown scabs on the back of the plant. I d is this some type of weird pest? I've never seen anything like this. I'm going to have to post this on Reddit or something because I'm just kind of like dumbfounded. I don't know what's going on. We have a couple leaves at the top that may or may not persist. I guess we will find out. As you can see, these are still very shiny though. They remind me of beetles. I just, I really like them. If they can just kind of like return back to normal and be green and not chlorotic and scabby and puckered and like kind of white in places, that would be great. They are still fuzzy though. Let me see if I can give you a sense of what this sounds like. That is the end of the video, but don't think I'm going to dangle that massive Hoya Polynera in front of your face and not give one of you a chance to win a cutting. To enter this, I just want you to comment below a plant that did well for you this winter or a plant that did not do well for you this winter or both, or if you want to add a description, you can also do that. An example of a simple answer would be, my snake plant did well for me this winter. That is it. I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. Um, if you want to add other details, location, whatever, where you have it in your house, you can do that. Not required. If you're here, you probably like the video. So like, like the video if you want to. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button. And if you want to know when they are out, hit the notification bell. I don't usually make a ton of videos very quickly, so it won't be going off and annoying you all the time. That's about it. I'll link my Instagram below and hopefully I can take some nice pictures with my stupid expensive camera. I'm very happy to own this. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to own this. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can support me on Patreon. Link below and thank you to my patrons. to put it back.